Nelson Mandela once said, uh, you know, don't judge me by my successes. Judge me by the number of times I fell down and stood up again. I owned a cricket bat, David Boone's bat. I was very thrilled. I had this beautiful cricket bat. I had a pair of Dunlop green flash shoes. And I thought I was heading to the stars in terms of cricketing. One day, my father, he just had some difference with his boss, quit his job uh, and came back home. And I had to support that. So one of the things I did was to become a subbroker of three uh, well-known stockbrokers. Uh, and I earned that one and a half, two percent of brokerage. And I remember I, I did successfully sell quite a few IPOs, which are really big companies today. While doing CA, I also had to make a choice of actually helping my father create a business. We focused on buying and selling TVs. When you sell TVs, one of the things I realized is that in India, you will have TV shops right next to each other selling the same brands. So you have to differentiate. When a customer came in and they said, you know, why should I pay you 400 rupees more? I would switch on a light behind the TV and say, mine is a German or a Japanese tube, a Telefunken tube or a Japanese tube. And that would actually convince the client that probably this TV was better. And even now, you know, as I run a large company and as I've run large companies across the years, I have always used that business ethic that the customer is always right. After spending 13 valuable years at ITC, Keshav moved on to a struggling IT company, Sintel, turning it into one of the world's 100 fastest growing small companies. But the turnaround Turk was not done just yet. It was time to reinvent the BPO industry. I guess my first impression of Keshav was it was very clear to myself and everyone that he was going to be shaking up the status quo. Legacy BPOs at the time, with call centers in India, relied on the low-cost labor arbitrage model. While the low-cost BPO model became an attractive option for companies in the West, it was evident that the industry needed a shake-up. Keshav saw great potential for growth in the sector, something he initiated when he joined WNS, a New York Stock Exchange listed company set up as a captive for British Airways in 1996. When I took the role at WNS and came in, it was in a situation which was actually in downward spiral. So when I came in, I actually had to, you know, I walked into the deep end of the pool and I had to, you know, really uh, pull together a, a lot of assets as well as try and create some magic that would help differentiate us. So one of the first things I did was, you know, engage with a lot of people inside the company. I was shocked when the feedback was they did not trust senior management at all, right? And they actually felt that uh, senior management had let them down. And that was a good starting point for me to actually hold uh, you know my first meeting you know rather than follow the traditional model of just inviting five or six of the senior leaders to a strategy meeting i branded and created a very interesting meeting format called the seven samurai format which 14 years later also is still in force and still motivates a lot of people